Hey everybody, we're checking out Dicey Dungeons. Terry Cavanaugh developed VVV, VVV. Developed Super Hexagon, now he's back with the RNG focused, but not entirely strategically uh, inert, roguelite. I think the way that you could consider this is Dicey Dungeons is a little bit like Slay the Spire meets Yahtzee. That, and I know that that's like the most short form game criticism that people make fun of. It's blank meets blank, but it's really a good way to think about it. Um, I figured, you know, it would be ignorant of me to not play a little bit of this on my channel. I don't know if I'm the roguelite guy, but as a guy, when people think of me, I think they think of roguelites. And I've been playing, honestly, this is it. Maybe two times a year, a roguelite comes out and grabs me like instantaneously. That's pretty much what's happened here. I played three hours on stream yesterday and it went by like. I don't want to snap again because it's overused, but it went by real quick. And then uh, I played like another two hours leisurely. Which I. For me to play five hours of a game in a single day is a little rare these days. So consider this at least right off the bat. No, I do not wish to continue this game. <laughs> Consider this right off the bat as a, as a glowing endorsement. So we're just, in case you have not seen it, we're going to play as the, the warrior. And we're going to start with, you know, the warrior's welcome. I don't know if, because I think this is, in order to beat this, or in order to unlock this, you have to get to this, or I'm not totally sure about it for now. But either way, in case you've never seen it, the easiest way to understand it will definitely be uh, watching a game where you play as the warrior. So I know we've completed this one time, but I still think we should do it here just as almost like a little bit of a, a re-entry point. Aww. And now entering battle again, the warrior. Aww. Who somehow is still trying. Rude. So, you're, you're, in case you haven't seen any of the Twitch VODs or you've never seen anybody else play, this is a very easy game to understand. Right off the bat, this is our equipment. We have a sword. The sword does sword damage. How do you determine what uh, damage it does? You gotta put a dice in there, almost like a game of Yahtzee. You can get other stuff that could be uh, one or two spaces. I've never seen an equipment that's four spaces, and then you slot it in Deus Ex style, and you're good to go. You'll see. You'll understand. Then it's a dungeon crawler, so you can move one space. If we want to get to the treasure, we gotta beat Wolf Puppy. If we want to get to the exit, we gotta beat Hothead. So let's get to the treasure. You'll you'll see in mere moments here what's happening. Sorry, I'm gonna hydrate a little bit. Careful, wolf puppy, strong against poison. Hmm. That is not mixed properly. Okay. So, we rolled a six and a four. Really, with no other equipment, there's not much incentive, but I should uh, show you that as the warrior, you get the ability to reroll a single dice. This is your unique ability, up to three times per turn. So, I mean, we could reroll a four, it's a one. Reroll the one, it's a one. Reroll the one, it's a four. Okay, so nothing has changed. But either way, we want to use our six right there in order to do as much damage as possible. And uh, other abilities can be used multiple times per turn, but some abilities, maybe most abilities, can only be used once per turn. So that's basically the end of our turn. So we can see what the enemy does here. If he puts an even dice in here, and if you want to argue, die, dice, dices, deuce, by all means in the comments below. I'm a la 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 la, I don't care, okay? We're here to play strategically with strategery and tactics. Strategic tactical gameplay is what you should come to expect. Now, he's got three dice. Again, if he puts an even here, he does four damage. So he could take a two and turn it into four damage, which is pretty good. Or, uh, or at end, I should say, if he gets a sum of eight dice cumulatively, he gets to repeat his next attack. So, hypothetically, if he got like a 6, a 2, and a 4, he could put the 6 and 2 in here, and then when he puts a 4 in here, it would uh, lead to him doing 8 damage, because both of these would trigger and this would work twice. I know I don't think that seems complicated, but I just want to make sure I explained it as, you know, obviously as possible. Okay, so he, next attack will be doubled, but he's not going to get a chance to do it. And he didn't have an even, so he couldn't have put it in that slot. Every time you kill an enemy, you get coins. I think you get one coin per encounter and experience equal to the enemy's level. Every time you level up, you get full HP. It's just that easy. Whip. Okay, so whip is a piece of equipment. Um, it, it's a two, like a one by two. So it takes up a lot of space. 
It does burn damage. So there is elemental damage. This will be stronger against enemies who are weak to fire. And if you put a six in here, it does one burn. Burn means if an, it, it lights a, an enemy die on fire. And if they touch it, like to use it in like one of their abilities, they take two damage. Or more maybe if they're weak to fire. But anyway, we'll see. This guy's not going to be weak to fire. He's going to be weak to ice because Terry Cavanaugh has no respect for Pokemon. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, I'll tell you. We don't want to do one damage. That's garbage. So we'll reroll it. Three, we'd expect to get better with two rerolls. Six, right out of the gate, I'm a happy man. So here's the thing. Where do we put the six? Where do we put the five? We could reroll the five to look for another six, but that's, you know, you got a two-thirds chance, a four out of six chance of getting something worse. A one out of six chance of having it be inert, and then a one out of six chance of being better. Obviously, if we get a status effect out of the six, we want that, even if he doesn't get that affected by burns. So we'll hit you for six, and we'll hit you for five raw damage. And then he's got a six himself, which is gonna... I mean, hurt me a great deal. Now, as you get hit, it charges up your limit break. As you can see, my limit break is Fury, which is what we just saw that the Wolf Pup had earlier. So we're gonna reroll the two. We got a six, which is fantastic. We could use the two, but it would cost us two HP and there's no reason. We'll just kill him instead. There's really no reason to do it. There's no reason not to, because we're gonna level up anyway, but after leveling up, we get an extra dice. I don't think you get an extra dice every level, Maybe every even level, now that I think about it. Alright, so everything's going hunky-dory so far. We got uh, more treasure. This is HP, obviously. Um, level 2, level 2, level 2. So we're readily equipped to take these guys. And then there's a shop. So, I mean, we can revisit the shop. But really, I think we want to get the equipment ASAP. It's like hitting an early item room in Isaac or something like that. And then we want to... Um, Go to the shop when we have enough gold to purchase a good piece of equipment. We can also upgrade our equipment as time goes on. Now, what's really unique, you might be like, okay, I get it, I get it. You also might think that I'm blocking something down in the bottom corner here, right there. It's just a character model. Don't say, there's no better place for this, honestly. I, we, we tried for a long time on yesterday's stream. I think this is as good as it gets. Um, but every single character of the five I've played so far plays differently. The warrior is just like, for now, raw dice rolls output a lot of damage. Then there's the thief. The thief benefits from getting as many low roll dice as possible. The inventor sacrifices equipment every single combat in order to make a new gadget like combat roll over here but with different effects. And then the witch has like a spell book, then you have to use the results of your dice roll to put spells onto the board and then use dice to cast them. That's about where my intellectual ability fell off a little bit, but maybe together we'll be able to figure it out. So we have a six right off the bat. In principle, you should always reroll first before you commit your results, but I mean, this is the optimal result, so let's just simplify the board to begin with. We'll reroll our three, because it's better than our, or it's worse than our five. We'll reroll the four, because it's worse than the five. We'll reroll the four, because it's worse than the five, and then, wouldn't you know it, the five still works here. All right, so for him, um, he did one damage and weakened us. Weakened means that one of our cards gets worse. So yeah, if we put a six here, it doesn't do uh, the... Or one of our uh, equipments gets worse, I should say. So if we put our six here, it actually won't do burn damage to any of his dice anymore. Womp womp. It happens. So we're just looking for the highest possible combination of two rolls. Totally fine. Doesn't really matter where you put the six and the five, we'll move along. All right, so he can still only do two damage because you, as you can see, the equipment there has conditions. So basically he can only have like a maximum of a value of four in there. The UI is sensible enough. You should be able to figure it out more or less, even if it hasn't uh, made itself second nature yet. So we got bump. Bump allows you to raise dice value by one. So basically, if you put a 5 in here, it becomes a 6. It's pretty useful. Now, Marshmallow. I believe the Marshmallow is on fire, so probably Burn is not that good, but still. Now, we do have our Limit Break. So ideally for me, we could use our Limit Break if we get a 6, and then we could inflict 2 Burn, which would make it so if he uses any of his dice, he takes damage. Plus, we might as well use our Limit Break if we get a chance, because we're not doing much with it anyway. So we reroll the one. We're looking for a five or a six. We got a five. So what do you do? You bump it. But you also definitely want to reroll a four. And it became another five, which is still fine. 
So we're gonna bump the value of the five, it becomes a six. Hit Fury, this will do 12 damage and inflict two burn. Pretty solid. Five extra damage on the sword. And I think you're like, I'm getting it. I, g I get it now, I'm starting to understand. So he did odd damage, or he got an odd dice value, which froze a dice. Frozen dice means that the highest roll we get turns into a one. Now for some characters, this actually, it seems bad, but it's really good. Like maybe you have a spell as the witch that's really high value on one. If all your dice become one, all of a sudden you're like, oh, you just, you fool, you just activated my trap card. But for us, it's kind of bad. But we can still use it as a reroll, so. Well. Well. Ah, it's still pretty good, so we'll uh, bump this up, and actually that gives us lethal. Easy money. Now, I'm, I'm willing to say, this first episode here will probably seem a little easy, but it, it's gotten much harder, especially as some of the other characters. So we have a choice of rewards. I really like um, Spiked Shield, because it's flexible. It can take uh, any value 1 through 5. 1 through 5 gives you shield, which is just protection. You know, it works like armor and hearthstone. It carries over turn to turn if you have a remainder. And then even just does extra damage. So it could give us 5 shield or 4 damage. And it gives us another place to put a dice, which is actually really valuable for us. Um, because as of right now, you know, we're not doing anything with it. So we're going to get rid of bump. This is another... I, I really like this element of the game. That you're constantly going to have to, like, rework your inventory based on... Maybe in the future, based on what encounters you have, like Slay the Spire style, but... Uh, right now, just for, like, what you have, that's the best available. So bump is good, don't get me wrong. But I'd rather have some defense. But the good news is, we might at some point reach uh, an upgrade, which could shrink one of our pieces of equipment and allow us to put bump back on the board. Okay, so... We have a 5, which is a nice shield, but let's see what you got. Uh, so you hit for whatever your dice roll is, and on 6 you restore 2 HP, and then you can also add poison, which works pretty much exactly as you'd expect. Um, let's re-roll our 3. Let's re-roll our 1. Now, this is a tough one, because there's no... There's no good reason... Well, there is a good reason we'd like to hit a 6, to re-roll, that is. But we also have an even so we could do damage here but I'm willing to here's the thing you know if we got a four there's a 50% chance we roll something worse and a 50% chance we stay at the same level or higher but the extra value of getting a six I think makes it worth re-rolling especially when we have two other decent rolls so that's pretty bad but um, we'll hit for five and we'll hit for four and then I think we'll just shield for one HP hasn't been that much of a concern but you know, I, I, I think that, generally speaking, my strategy is the warrior so far, and I'll level with you. I got no idea what I'm talking about, but, um, is that you kill enemies faster. Defense is not as important, which is why I like the flexibility for this to be offense or defense. But as other characters, that might change it. I mean, I've only played, like, two rounds with the warrior, so what do I know? So, we, ideally, we'd like to do 17 damage. That would require... It's not possible without Fury, actually. Because we could do 6, 6... Four. So that's only 16. So we probably want to stall for another turn. We'll definitely start by rerolling the two. We should kill him next turn. Easily. Um, I'm going to reroll the three. So bad. Um, so honestly, I think I'm going to put up maximum protection here. So we have five shield. And then we'll do five damage. Then we only have to do 12 next turn, which is fairly sensible. So we're gonna block... Oh, uh, we blocked all the damage, but we do have four poison, which ticks at the start of turn. So that hurts pretty bad. Uh, but I don't think we need to use Fury here. Not yet, anyway. So we need to do 12 damage. We already have it. Three, five, and then an even four to do damage. And we organized it like that because we needed the four to be even in order to do, do damage with the shield instead of providing defense. So... It might seem backwards as we heal up here, but there, there was a method to my madness. All right, so at the shop here, let me, let's see what we got going on. It's an interesting setup. I don't know if I like Buckler when we already have the shield. 
But I do kind of like the idea of Midnight Charm. If you get two fives, for example, uh, then you can go up to two sixes, which uh, sixes are very high value for us right now. Um, we could do like a poison build, we don't really have any other enablers. I'm gonna give this a shot, and what's, what's nice is like, sure we spent gold, but if this new strategy for us ends up like not working, we can just put spike shield back in there. It's, it's pretty like risk tolerant in the early game at least. So as you can see we're on floor 3, uh, there's 6 floors, but the 6th floor is just a boss. So I, I'd say we're cruising right along. This is an upgrade uh, beacon. In general, I think you want to fight absolutely everything, and you want to probably fight the lowest uh, level unit first, I think. Alright, so here's here's my thinking, right? You could probably do this a different way, but if we put if we bump this and put two fives in here, then we get two sixes. But here's the downside. We don't have any... All we get out of that is a little extra damage and burn here. We don't actually get... Like, with, with Spike Shield, we have some place to put all three of our die, or dice, in order to get a value. Here, we basically are spending dice in order to make two other dice results better. Whether that's worth something or not, you know, that's kind of the game. So, although... Double next action. I mean, if we wanted to get hilarious, you can see how the synergies would work here. We could double uh, the Midnight Charm. Then for 10, we would get four sixes. But it's not like we'd get any value out of four sixes anyway, because we only have two resultant spots to put them. But anyway, you know, you can kind of get an idea of, of how things can get crazy. And they will get a little crazier. So we're going to double Whip, because it does burn damage. And then we'll we also have Sword going there. He'll probably be killed next turn. Wow. That hurts. So he did 12 damage. And our limit break came back. Because <laughs> he had the greatest turn you could ever imagine. Anyway, we don't need to go over the analytics of every single encounter in the game. You know, as you can see, if we got lethal, we might as well just put it out there. So let's heal up. Check out our new equipment. Chocolate cookie for 12. We can repeat our next attack. We'll take it, but we kind of already have... Uh... We're, we're, we're full, basically, right now. But our upgrade anvil could change that. Fireman. Four dice. Jeez Louise. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat. We want to reroll. And then we want to reroll. And then we want to reroll. It's not great, but either way, we'll bump. I don't know why my mouse is doing the, the Windows thing. I apologize. It's probably very annoying. Um... Then we'll use Fury. We'll burn you twice, even though it doesn't do any extra damage. I'm, I'm sure you still take damage from your dice being burned. Unfortunately, it burned two ones, which doesn't really uh, incentivize anything. And now we're burned ourselves. Um, so we want to do 16 damage. We can, for 2 HP... Well, let's just be realistic. We can't do 16 damage. The maximum damage we could do on a single turn is 12, unless we have our limit break. Um, so we could turn a 6 and a 4 into two sixes. But if we already are kind of like in this setup, like I feel like we can kill him next turn. I just want to look at his moves to make sure we're not going to die. Yeah, to kill us, he would have to roll two sixes. On four dice, that's not on... It's not impossible. But I think if we do this, we'll be at 14 HP. Oh, but we have to use... Well, we would like to use the 6. As long as we don't use both burn dice, we should be unkillable. But it's still, like, a little dangerous. You know, this is where you start to reason it out a little bit. Um, I mean, the, literally for 2 HP, we can secure the best possible turn. Actually, because we hit Fury, I'm pretty sure that we actually have, like, lethal. Yo! Taking some damage to trigger your limit break. We leveled up to get full HP anyway. Um, that is pretty solid. Now I gotta tell you, I actually think we we want Spiked Shield back. Um, things were getting a little spottier. It's a little bit less cool of a build, more conventional, but we'll, we'll roll it for now. I think having a spot to actually put three dice, now that we have like four that we're rolling, is very valuable. So, I actually love a 5 here, so I think we're cool with these. We'll reroll our 4, and we're really just rerolling for extra damage from Sword, which is not 
Mission critical, but hey, if it works, it works. Put some burn on him. Five block. Now this guy adds thorns to himself, so the more thorns he has, which requires odds. That was a great roll. Um, the more damage he does to us, and the more damage we do to him. Or the more damage he does to us when we attack him, I should say. So we still like the five, and we're actually going to put the five on right off the bat for five shield, so we are shielded from the thorns. Um, if we did it in a different order, it's like, you know, if somebody has thorns and slay the spire, you want to put your block on first before you hit them most of the time. So we'll reroll our two. Reroll a four. Reroll a four. Hey, Yahtzee. Um, Hitcha. Oh, no, we still lose the HP, so never mind. But, I mean, we still want to hit you. You know, your best uh, defense is a good offense, sometimes. More thorns, more damage. One thorn. Hmm. Well, we just want to ice him. So, I mean, the way that we would do it. We can't do it in one attack. So we might as well do it like this. Two attacks, we take a little damage. Life goes on. The max level, by the way, is 6. Which is nice, actually, because it, it means you basically expect to gain, like, a level per floor. So let's look at our upgrades. Some of them are pretty conventional. Sword will do 1 extra damage. Whip, on a 6, it'll inflict double burn. Which, we're getting a lot of 6s. That's pretty tempting. Spike shield, it can now take 6s, but that really only allows us to do 6 damage. And we'd have to roll 2 6s in order to use it, because we love the whip on 6 anyway. But here's where it gets interesting. Chocolate cookie for nine. You can repeat next attack. You can see there might be like a little synergy there with Midnight Charm. Yo, that's so good. If you roll a five, you can turn it into two sixes. That's hilarious. And bump get, can be used twice, which is actually pretty good as well. The only thing here is, is a space issue, right? So if we roll, we roll a five, we turn it into two sixes. You put those two sixes in a chocolate cookie. And then maybe double up on your, your whip and it might work for you. So I think we're gonna... We are gonna upgrade Midnight Charm. And this is a little bit of a meme build, which is dangerous. Let's let's actually check out our shop first before we, you know, reshuffle our inventory just to see what we got. Okay, unfortunately these are not very great for us because they incentivize low rolls. And then Iron Shield is just, you know, it's kind of... To me, it feels like a worse version of Spike Shield right now. Although it could take a 6 for block. And it doesn't need evens or odds, but... I just don't think any of these are that good for what we're rolling right now. So here's what I'm thinking. Here's the flow chart, okay? You get rid of... It. Honestly, we could probably get rid of Sword. And then, we have Midnight Charm. Chocolate Cookie. The danger here... Is we can really, we need to get Chocolate Cookie to double up a 6 for Whip. Then we do 12 damage to Burn. We're, we got opportunities here to see if it's going to work, you know. We still have one more floor to level up and feel things out. So let's look at this carefully. You're level 4. Level 3, we'll fight level 3 first. The way the systems interact in the game is super cool. So I just want to see real quick what the Key Master actually does. Unlocks Keyblade, returns the dice. I have no idea. Um, so I'll tell you. I actually think this time we're going to use a 6 to turn into two 6s. Because I want the 5 to block. Then we... This is our exact dream scenario. So Chocolate Cookie doubles our next attack. We do 12 damage and inflict 2 burn. And I was hoping we could put more into Chocolate Cookie, but that's okay. So he spends his 5, unlocks the Keyblade, returns the dice. Do 3 damage, return the dice. Okay, I see. Sort of. <laughs> so we definitely want to reroll our 1s. This is a much worse roll. I think we still want to reroll our 1s. I, I can't see why he wouldn't. Okay, so I think you go, your 5 becomes two sixes. You put three fours into this. No, 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 no. You put two fours and a six into this. So that you can then double up on this and still get a little extra out of spike shield. Because otherwise, a six can't go into spike shield unless it's upgraded. So we rolled a two. He takes damage. 
returns the dice, does three damage to me. We'll hit limit break, but not use it, because he's he's done anyway. We'll just ice him. No limit break required. So it is working. Whether or not it'll work long term uh, remains to be seen. Level four, level four. Let's see what you got for me. Staff. For eight, deals six damage and burns a dice. It's, it's too big to fit in right now, but I mean, I will say you never know, right? Um, I'm going to fight Loud Bird. It's a scary enemy. Let's just try to remember what we want here. So I think right off the bat, you want to reroll your, your bad die, your low rolls, because they're not really bad, necessarily. It happens. Um, so I think you will turn a five into two sixes, and then we'll do six, six, and then we'll burn twice. And we'll only get three shield, but life goes on. Yikes, those are some high rolls. You do have doubles, so I'm going to be silenced. And then you double 10 damage with two weakness? What the heck, dude? Okay, so silence just means we can't use our limit break, but we have so much weakness as well. I don't need to break the silence, because this is just our, our special ability to reroll. 10... 10 to roll 1-6, are you insane? This is this is really bad, to be honest. I think we'll do 5 to put a shield on ourselves. Um, I'm going to do 5 damage. I don't know what happened there, just to be honest with you. And then I'm gonna I'm just gonna feed chocolate cookie so it's ready to be used more easily next turn. This guy sucks though. Stop rolling so high, you coward, although it actually doesn't well, it does matter. But he can't weaken us this turn. Still silence. Do we still have to break silence um, before we can move on? Because that's that's nuts. Either way, I'll tell you. We love this. We might actually be able to use a six to break our silence here. So repeat next attack. Burn this son of a gun two times. Only once, though. Why? He, maybe he had a dodge? I don't know. Um, we'll put a 1 and a 6 here to break our silence. And then 5 block. Now we got 10 shields, so it's going to be real hard for this guy to hurt us. But he's... Uh, this guy. Come on. Son of a gun, silence me again. But what do we like? Turning a five into two sixes is just unbelievable. Oh good, our weakened chocolate cookie literally has no effect. So I think actually, you know what we want to do? Break the silence. I think you should limit break him. Then we want to reroll to try to get like a three. Two, two at least works, five is nothing, so. Honestly, we have five shield already. I think I'd rather hit him for two. This guy's a real pain in the butt, huh? He, he, stop rolling doubles. Dodge next attack. Okay, so that's what that was. So we need to hit him two times. The second time has to be for four. Okay. We almost have it. The problem... <laughs> we need to place two dice to break the silence. And then we need to be able to hit him one more time. So like this, because he dodges, and then this will hit him and kill him. You suck. I hate you. My lord. Okay, so this is a trade. And I gotta tell you, trades have not been good for me in the past. You want to trade whip for shovel. Literally, it's just um, trading. It's the same equipment, except it weakens... And does weaken damage or ground damage. What's better, burn or weaken? I honestly think that this is a weird scenario where weaken is probably better. To make some enemy cards worse or useless, and by cards I just mean equipment. Yeah, I think that's probably better than 2 HP that they can still work around. Because weaken has no hard counter. But I do like this new style that we got going on. It does seem to be working. We'll level up uh, if we kill Crystalina. So let's, let's give Shovel a try now. And it's still the same inventory space. So what do we like? You always want to turn a 5 into two sixes. The thing is, you could turn a 6 into two sixes, which is still better. But 5 into two sixes. 
I think we want to reroll our four, because three shield might be nice. Reroll a two, of course. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what happens? Well, two sixes go in here. We'll double our damage and weaken twice, which is really weakens two pieces of equipment. I don't know how the weak is going to work there, but... And we'll put up three shield at the end. So let's see. Yo, no effect. Well, unfortunately, you're kind of spoiled for choice. So you did five damage and weakened me. At least we had a little shield working. So weaken is not very good against Crystallina. Not right now, at least. So we love a five right here. Reroll the one. Midnight Charm is basically useless now. I'll still reroll a four. I think it's worth trying to get a little bit. It's worth swinging for the fences, I think. Not a, not a big loss. So we want the five here. Six here. Eh, why not, you know? And then this is cumulative damage or cumulative value. So we're just dumping points in there. And, you know, we, it makes it easier to enable next turn. Let's put it that way. Curse. It's the first time we've seen curse. Oh, come on. And shock. So shock um, disables a piece of equipment. It disabled our big damage dealer, which is really unfortunate. Curse gives you a 50% chance for your equipment to fail. Which means we it disappears when it's gone. Or when it works once. So we want to use our lowest value equipment first. So for example, re-rolling this three. Re-rolling this one. Maybe this doesn't count as equipment, to be fair. Next step. Midnight Charm? It worked. Thank God. Okay. Next step. Um, I would think releasing Shock. Then we'll put a six here. Okay. So we didn't get to double our attack, but that's fine. We do still get to attack and weaken. We do still get five on the Spike Shield. Okay, so we're weakened and shocked again. And another crystal weapon. So you can see the enemies get like a lot harder as time goes on. Well, we always like a five into two sixes. And then a two is pretty much useless no matter what. We have enough good dice to accomplish whatever we want to accomplish here. 12 repeats next attack. So I think this is pretty easy. We put a six and a six. Double damage with the two times weakness. And then we reroll this. We're looking for a one or a three, really. Now, a two is tough. But honestly, I think I can get to 12 damage no matter what next turn. Ten would make it easier. He's done it. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta roll the dice. This should be the game's tagline. Now, I'll level with you. You might be like, NL, how are you following like everything the enemy does at all times? Oh, I'm not. Absolutely not. Beautiful. I just, you, you get a general feel for what's happening, and then it, I think it sort of pieces itself together. So I think you turn six into two sixes. This son of a gun's gonna live for another turn. I should have just put the six in here and furied. I'm not, I'm not gonna fury. I don't think there's any point in furying right now. I'll, I'll put up a little block. We'll save our fury for our next combat. But, you know, suffice it to say, I'm worried our damage output might be a little bit on the low side here. Either way, as long as we don't have to burn you, we're fine. And we're not cursed, which is even better. So, um, we're looking to roll a five into two. No, we don't actually need that. We could just do five damage, four damage. Beautiful. Hope we didn't miss any lethals in there. And we leveled up, so our HP's full anyway. Needs doubles, bash with shield. No, no, no. Upgrade equipment, absolutely. So chocolate cookie, I don't think we need it to be upgraded. Shovel, to be honest, we're hitting sixes like all the time because of our midnight charm. So I don't really think we need to make it so that on evens it inflicts weakness. The question is like, what do you make better? Midnight Charm, you can't upgrade things twice, as cool as that would be. You could bump things twice. Doesn't seem that necessary. Staff does two extra damage. 
I don't know. This is, it, I shouldn't. I accidentally quick, uh, clicked upgrade on, on something I wasn't even using, in case you were concerned, like, wow, NL, he's been way more intelligent lately. Haha. I'm just thinking if we even want to put staff over shovel. This does a maximum of six damage per turn, inflicts weakness once. This can, well, this can do 16 if we doubled it, burn two. Okay, sure. You know what? I'll give it a try. Again, if it fails, we could always bring Shovel back. Okay, so we got one more floor. This floor's got a lot more combat. I gotta be honest, the run's a little harder than I thought it would be right now. So this is a good time for Fury. So the Singer does, does damage and weakens us. Weakened is pretty bad for us, honestly. Um... I think you're you're still gonna want to turn a six into two sixes because of the fact that uh, spike shield really benefits from having a five. But we'll see if we can get another like a surplus of high rolls first. No such luck. So your six becomes two sixes. Then four, four. Six. You know what? We should use it, because then it refreshes for the next turn. But, I, you, you see my conundrum. We're now spending too many dice to make dice, and we don't have good spaces for them. So I think, honestly, I'll just own my failure to click the right button, and we'll probably just bring Shovel back. Yeah. Deal three damage, burn a dice. Oh, it's pretty bad because it's like one of our only ways to deal any damage at all. We'd still prefer to double this though. And the other thing is our rerolls didn't go so hot for us last time, so you know there's no accounting for for that. So we roll two sixes. We can't double up on anything, so we might as well just uh, six, three, put five here for shield, and then six here to load this for next time, but we don't want to put the other six because it'll use it for no benefit. You follow? You follow. I mean, it's going pretty badly, to be honest with you. We don't level up for a long time, and we got a lot of combat coming our way. So you definitely, like, ones are not worth much. Threes are actually pretty good because of blocks, so we'll reroll a four instead. It's not great. Um... Well, this is where it's good to roll the line. If we put a th uh, let's say we put two fours in here, then we get two sixes. Two sixes. Six, six, four, three. Yeah, actually, I think this is my line. Let me explain. So you spend eight to get two sixes. Then, 1-6 doubles up on an attack. We'll get 6 damage... ...twice. No, we'll get 6 damage total, plus 2 burns. And we still have a little block left over. We might want to use this limit break. I mean, it recharges fairly quickly, but... I do appreciate the shield. We didn't take... We took 1 damage on that turn. So now we just need to do 13 damage. I hate that Staff is always the weakened one. So the one needs to get rerolled. I think my my hunch is that with Fury, we actually have a kill. But we need to double up on... Oh, we can't even put a four in there, though. So I know I'd actually, now that I think about it, I think lethal is definitely impossible. And really, I think you don't even need to do this, but... I mean, I, maybe if you double Furied, you might get it, but I don't think so. We can't even use our Spike Shield. Low rolls. We definitely have you next turn. Thank God you're not getting that high note. But this is, things are getting real touchy. I hate the weakness, brother. De-estroyed, but also, that was a problem. <laughs> I don't know. 
I feel like the extra two that it costs in order to use your upgraded staff actually makes shovel more consistent, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Thank God for the HP. We got a long trip ahead of us. Now this is good rolling. Okay. Fury doubles next action. So we can actually go to 10. 10 block. This gets tough. So every time he uses this, it uh, it does more damage. So the longer this fight goes on, the better it is for him. We already have one five, so let's turn a five into two sixes. And then two sixes in here. Repeat next attack. Let's repeat our shovel to weaken him twice. And then, it's weird, but let's fury our shield. Then we have 10 shield protecting us for, I'm sure, a long time. But he does have five dice. So he's blinded two dice. This is another interesting mechanic. So we don't know what two of these dice are, all right? But we have two fives here, which is pretty good. One thing we could do is turn a blind dice, put it in here, then we know what it is. And if it's a five or greater, we get two sixes. It was a four. So no matter what, we're probably gonna get two six. Well, we're definitely gonna get two sixes. Um, not probably. <laughs> and then we got six. We already have 10 shield, so I honestly think you go 5-5 five, five, and then double up on the damage and weakness. Even though it's a, a bit of a messed up yield. The weakness is really valuable because it, it ruins his cards. We are cursed. It makes his cards lower value. We're cursed and we have one blind die. Um, so that was a 4 again. Why not? Okay, so we lost that, but that's not that bad. We still have 10 shield, which is awesome. Um, I uh, Straight up, we'll, we'll try for the highest roll possible, which is awesome, because we'll put it in here. We don't need any more shield. And next turn, that's going to be much easier to enable. So, you know, in the early game, it really seems like the enemies... I'm not going to say that you can do whatever you want, because I don't think that's correct. But, uh, you know, you can play your strategy a little bit more effectively, I think. These guys, once you get a little later, things become a lot tougher, I think. Rerolling a blind dice, I think, keeps it blind. Yeah. So we'll just toss it in here. That's a four. Now we got two sixes. Six. Double up on this. And there's lethal on the spike shield, thankfully. Thankfully! <laughs> We're getting there. So I think there's no reason not to go for an upgrade here. But we should upgrade something like, you know, that we've got. Maybe, honestly, chocolate cookie being upgraded, something that we're using is what I mean to say. Upgrading chocolate cookie, I think, does smooth it out just a little bit. Um, we could upgrade another piece of equipment. And to some extent, I am kind of like, why wouldn't you? We'll make Shovel better, because it's probably going to be doubled most of the time anyway. There might come a time where we can't get sixes. Maybe we fight like a boss who who freezes us. We probably could have gotten the equipment first, and that might have been a little bit better. But So Burn is better against Groot here, but that's that's fine. So he's he, he does Burn damage, and he's got Sustain if he rolls sixes. So Weakness, as you might expect, is going to be pretty good. So the way I look at this right now... I mean, we have 5-4 we can toss in here, and then 6 is great. So we really just want to turn this into a 3 or a 5. Okay, so with that failing, um, I think we actually like two fours in here, even though it's overkill. And then, we actually get maximum yield anyway. We, we overpaid for everything. But just think of it as like we're Warren Buffett. We had enough money, so who cares if it's an overpay as long as it's convenient. Wow! I can't believe he actually got the he got the heal off of that. Okay, so this is a much worse situation um, because our burn dice is our lower dice. We'd prefer not to use it, so we want to turn this into a 5 or a 6. Okay, so you turn your 6 into 2... I think you re-rolled the, the four, cause so you can still get a shield out of the three. Hope for a high roll. That's horrible. Um, so I'm going to go three, and then I'm going to pay for the two. 
and then it's pretty much it's the same sort of situation. You go six, six. Unfortunately, you only get one shield. We still got him pretty good though. And he basically, yeah, he can do one damage. And then the burn is actually still pretty bad, to be honest. There was health in the shop if we needed, though. I mean, you reroll a one. Five is really good. Reroll a two. I think you rerolled a four, so we have block potential. God, that's horrible. <laughs> um, we definitely want to weaken. So I'm I'm thinking about it. If we roll three one one, we get two sixes. Six here, six here, five here. Next turn we'd get that. If we roll five here, we get two sixes. Six here. It's really what's worth more: two weakness and more damage, or four more block. I don't think we're gonna die, so I think the damage is worth more. In which case, I think we take this line. Which allows us to do the most damage. And, you know, we don't have a great block, obviously. But at least it's something. Everything's pretty okay, honestly. We don't even need the limit break. We can save it for our next turn. But things are <laughs> getting a little spotty. But, you know, we're one fight against a level 5 enemy away from leveling up. No worries. Nah, nah, we're gonna take it, but I, I see purple, I know it's poison. We're not really rolling a poison build, so I'm not sweating it. We healed up, and uh, all we gotta do is beat Paper Knight, and then we, we're gonna have a chance against the boss. Really should have put some burns in here, honestly. Okay, so Limit Break, what does Paper Knight have? Lots of damage, so we might wanna double up using Fury on Spike Shield, but for now, I'll tell you, we don't need it too. We don't need it to. We don't need it to. It's okay. Two and three equals six. We're gonna do quad weakness, I hope. Double next action. Maybe not. It totally worked. But it only it only added one. I thought it would double it. And we might as well hit you again. Okay. I mean, three weakness is pretty solid. You need a six? No! <laughs> you need a five! You got, you The weakness gave you exactly what you needed anyway. Okay, so locked dice means you can't even use it. So we, we really want to roll something that can create two sixes, to be honest. A four and a three for two sixes? Yeah. I'll do it, because I still think weakness is important in spite of myself. Um, this is a situation... Paper Knight can do so much damage. I think we want to weaken, dump this, and then put a shield up. I know we could have doubled on weakness, but I think it's, it's too risky. At least it's doing less damage. Okay, so this is like... Fury is very important here. Please give me four sixes. Thank you. Okay, was that necessary? Oh, almost certainly not, now that I think about it, but it felt good. So we want to reroll sixes. They're useless. Useless. Three is as good as it gets. Please, God, just keep me alive. All we gotta do is live. Oh, let's go. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> A completely useless turn. Um, so we now we just want to double, which really just requires doing one of these. Six, three, you lose, I said good day, sir, etc, etc. You receive an extra dice. We go down. Okay, who's the boss? Warrior versus Iolfi. I don't know, uh, I don't know what your gimmick is. I've never fought you before. Let's see. Hey, it's over, Dice Kid. What do you got? You, it seems like the speed that you got here means low rolls. Oh, very tanky. So weakness is probably something we're going to like here. 
Bash with shield for zero damage. Oh, you, so you add big shields, and then you hit, you get double damage, basically, or extra damage out of your saber attack. Okay, so what do we not like? One. Two. Three is not a bad roll. Two is horrible. Okay, so... I think we do want to turn two threes into two sixes. Then, six, three into a double weakness, and then three shield. Obviously you prefer five shield, but other than that, that's pretty close to our ideal turn. So she can't add as much shield, and then she does eight damage. That's not that bad. That's not that bad at all. So you always want to reroll the one, you always want to reroll the two, and now you got a bunch of sixes. That's a good setup. So you need the five here. Um... I don't really think, to be honest with you, the rest of the turn plays itself without even needing Midnight Charm. We get the double weakness. Which means that both of her attacks are weak. She added four shield, didn't get a six, so she can't attack. It might be a long fight, but I think we're in control. With two fives, one five going right into Midnight Charm. Means that we have our ideal turn already. I know it seems like we're kind of rushing it, but we can't do better without Limit Break, then doubling up on our Shovel, and also adding 5 Shield. So if we get that, why waste everybody's time with the rerolls? Added, 4 Shield, no ability to attack. We locked her down! Same situation here. If you roll a if you roll 2 natural 5s, your turn is over. You, you already have exactly what you need in order to make progress on the fight. 2 natural 5s equals you have, you have your line perfectly. 5 Shield, no attack. It's a dream come true. Two natural sixes is actually the same boat. So ones are worth nothing, more or less. Oh, come on. Either way, four, two. This time we have no shield, but we have 15 shield backed up, so. We shouldn't have done it. Well, it didn't really matter. We'll hit you for six twice. We'll hit you for four once. And and really, like, you're in a just a terrible position. Still got no sixes. Maximum shield of three. We're gonna win! We'll just put two fours in here. You know how she goes. Hit you with these. Double up on this. We need six damage. Cannot be done, for the record. We already have 15 shield. We should look for a four, and that's exactly what we got. Next turn, you're toast! Next turn, you're toast! That hurt, though. Okay, so we gotta do six damage. Guess what? We've done it. And that's Dicey Dungeons! It was a little bit of a longer run than expected, but uh, a fun one nonetheless. We're rooting for you, so let's spin the wheel. It hits death every time, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's a meme. Either way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll be back to play as all these characters. The robot is definitely my favorite so far. Very fun, but we'll play as the thief next. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!